The first warning did not come from the roar of the water or the rumble of rock. It came from the cold, clinical eye of a satellite orbiting more than two hundred miles above Earth, a machine built for measurement that suddenly found itself staring at a mystery. Why would the ground beneath one of the most iconic waterfalls on the planet begin to split in a pattern that no model predicted? Why would a region known for its ancient bedrock suddenly tremble as if something deep below had begun to shift? And more urgently, how long had this been happening without anyone noticing? The images arrived at NASA's Geospatial Monitoring Division in the early hours of a quiet Tuesday morning, flagged automatically by a system trained to detect geological anomalies. The rift did not present itself as a simple crack or fault line. It showed as a long, sinuous tear, stretching for more than one mile, or roughly one and one-half kilometres, threading beneath the American side of Niagara Falls, and angling toward the Canadian cliffs like a vein of tension waiting to snap. What caught analysts off guard was not its scale, but the speed at which it seemed to be widening. Satellite passes only days apart, showed measurable divergence, tiny on human terms but astonishingly fast for a region considered stable. By midday, a small group of NASA geologists, seismologists and data engineers found themselves locked in a room usually reserved for higher security briefings. There were no press releases, no statements, no calls to local authorities. Not yet. First, they needed to make certain of what they were seeing. Had the satellite misread shadow as structure? Could ice formations or glacial remnants have tricked the algorithms into detecting a fracture that did not exist? Did the unusual pattern of winter thaw and freeze distort the ground enough to mimic structural movement? They combed through thermal data, multispectral imaging, topographic shifts derived from radar interferometry, and archive scans from previous years. With each layer added to the analysis, denial became harder. The rift was real. It had not been there before. And it was growing. The oldest geologist in the room, a woman with more than three decades of field experience, looked at the composite visualization, and quietly exhaled. Her voice carried no drama, only the weight of certainty. She said the fracture was moving through rock that should have taken centuries to yield even a fraction of an inch. Yet it had shifted the width of a fingernail roughly one-sixteenth of an inch, or about one and one-half millimeters in less than a week. That rate, if sustained, would not just reshape the landscape it would alter the entire hydrological force of the falls. But the story did not rest in numbers alone. It rested in the implications. If a structural tear was forming beneath Niagara, what force was driving it? The region had no active volcanoes, no wandering magma bodies, no young mountain-building faults. It was a landscape carved by glaciers long gone, grounded in bedrock, that had slept for hundreds of millions of years. A sudden shift demanded an explanation. NASA turned next to drone imaging, partnering quietly with the Canadian research team already studying erosion patterns along the escarpment. They were instructed to fly low, but discreetly, using high-resolution LIDAR to scan the terrain. The team assumed it was routine atmospheric data collection, nothing unusual. Only later were they told to aim their equipment toward a specific grid of coordinates just shy of the American Channel. The LIDAR results, once transmitted, delivered the first real shock. Beneath a shallow overburden of soil and fractured rock, the drone's instruments revealed voids, not natural caverns formed by water erosion, but elongated hollows shaped like tension gaps. They were narrow, jagged, and oddly symmetrical, widening toward the direction of the accelerating rift. 
The air trapped in these gaps registered slightly warmer than the surrounding substrate, though not warm enough to suggest geothermal activity. It was the pattern, not the temperature, that troubled the analysts. It looked like something pulling from below, as if deep-rooted layers of the earth had begun shifting not horizontally, but vertically. That possibility was raised only once in the briefing, but it chilled the room. Vertical movement in ancient bedrock could signify subsidence triggered by subterranean pressure changes. But what kind of pressure? From where? And why now? Scientists proposed theories, each more unsettling than the last. One hypothesis suggested that the underlying shale formations, long considered impermeable, might be undergoing accelerated dissolution due to changing groundwater chemistry. But the available data did not support that explanation. Another raised the possibility of a previously unmapped fault system awakening under stress from fluctuating water loads caused by changing regional weather patterns. That theory fit the dynamics better, yet the fracture's speed still seemed unnatural. The most controversial idea came from a young analyst specialising in geospatial anomaly modelling. She proposed that the fracture might not be a single structure, but part of a network, a system stretching far deeper than anyone had mapped. She showed a visualisation of layered densities in the Earth's crust beneath the falls. Within this model, faint signatures appeared, not faults, not fractures, but linear zones of differential rigidity. They resembled underground pathways of weakened rock that had lain dormant for eons. Now, for reasons unclear, they were activating. The room fell silent at her suggestion. If such pathways existed, if ancient stress lines in the planet's crust were awakening, then Niagara's fracture was not an isolated development. It was a symptom. But a symptom of what? NASA leadership authorized the next step. A cross-agency collaboration with the United States Geological Survey and the Canadian Geological Survey. Quiet meetings were held, documents shared with security markings, and sudden interest emerged from sectors usually uninterested in waterfall geology. If a major destabilization was unfolding, the consequences could be enormous. The falls were not merely a natural wonder. They were a binational powerhouse supplying significant hydroelectric energy to millions of residents, a tourism engine, and a geological anchor for an entire region. A shift in the bedrock could alter water flow, disrupt turbines, destabilize cliffs, and in a worst-case scenario, trigger a collapse. The idea of millions of gallons or tens of millions of litres of water redirecting abruptly through a newly formed channel was unthinkable. Yet ignoring the possibility was riskier. The first official field inspection was dispatched quietly at dawn, carried out by a joint team disguised as routine maintenance inspectors. They moved along the American side under the cover of early morning mist, equipped with ground-penetrating radar and seismic sensors small enough to pass as ordinary measuring equipment. The tourists who arrived later had no idea that only hours earlier the cliff's edge had been quietly assessed for micro-vibrations that might suggest imminent failure. What the team detected was subtle but alarming. Vibrational signatures usually consistent and predictable along the escarpment, showed irregular fluctuations. They were extremely small, far too minute for human senses, but their distribution mirrored the pattern of the satellite-detected rift. Worse, the sensors registered faint harmonic pulses coming from deep beneath the riverbed. These pulses were natural, not mechanical, but they indicated movement. The field led a seasoned seismologist, listened through the headphones and removed them slowly. 
He had heard similar frequencies before in regions where rock layers were sliding under uneven stress. The sound reminded him of distant thunder, muffled by miles of stone. He ordered additional readings, then ordered them again. The signature persisted. Something was shifting beneath the Niagara River, far below the foaming surface that tourists photographed every day with delight and awe. The team recorded the data, packed their instruments, and left without raising attention. They knew the readings would escalate the urgency of the situation. They also knew that every hour of delay increased the risk of the unknown becoming the unavoidable. Back at NASA headquarters, analysts constructed a new model incorporating the seismic data, drone scans, and satellite imagery. The fracture line extended deeper than previously assumed, cutting through the upper layers of dolomite and into the weaker shale below. The danger lay not in a sudden catastrophic collapse, but in progressive destabilization, the kind that accelerates unpredictably once it reaches a tipping point. They ran simulations of water flow redistribution, cliff erosion acceleration, and potential redirection of the river. Some outcomes showed minimal impact. Others showed the unimaginable, a complete rechanneling of part of the Niagara River, carving a new path through structurally compromised rock and diverting water away from the iconic crestline. The falls as the world knew them could be altered permanently within years, possibly sooner. Still, none of these models answered the core question. What had awakened the rift? Was the Earth reclaiming an ancient fracture line long dormant? Were deeper forces at play? Forces that satellites were only now capable of revealing? Could this be an early sign of broader geological transformation across the region, a regional shift so slow and subtle that humanity had overlooked it for centuries? Scientists debated late into the night, their discussions circling the same uncertainty. Natural systems do not change without cause. Something had changed beneath Niagara, and the falls themselves, roaring overhead with the force of thousands of tons of water each second, might be masking a deeper, quieter upheaval. The next phase of investigation required instruments far more sensitive than surface sensors or passing satellites. NASA and its partner agencies arranged a series of micro-seismic arrays to be positioned discreetly around both the American and Canadian sides of the gorge. These arrays, no larger than portable radios, were planted under the guise of environmental monitoring devices. Their true purpose was more urgent, to listen to the Earth's internal murmur to detect tremors too small to register on standard seismic networks, but large enough to reveal patterns of stress building in the ancient bedrock. For the first 24 hours, the readings offered nothing remarkable, just the natural hum of the earth, the steady grinding of water against stone, the faint vibration of tourist traffic overhead. Then, just after midnight, the arrays began to detect a pulse, a rhythmic pattern emerging from deep beneath the river. It started faintly, with the signature of movement occurring more than a mile or roughly one and six-tenths kilometres below the surface. That depth placed it directly within the crystalline basement rock, a formation that should have been as immovable as iron. The pulse repeated at intervals too irregular to be mechanical and too persistent to be dismissed. The analysts who reviewed the data recognized the rhythm immediately. It was the pattern of micro-fracturing the sound of rock under stress, cracking along its weakest planes. But this was not ordinary bedrock shifting under erosion or surface pressure. This came from deep layers that had no history of instability. The next satellite pass corroborated the suspicion. The rift had widened again, not by inches, not even by fractions of an inch, but by the width of a strand of wire roughly one thirty-second of an inch, or a fraction of a millimeter in just twenty-four hours. Tiny by human scale, enormous by geological standards. The widening was not uniform. It stretched in a jagged, branching shape toward the river channel, as if guided by an unseen hand.
At this point, the research teams could no longer evade the difficult questions. Why would deep crystalline rock be fracturing at a pace measurable within days? What subterranean force could pull apart a formation that had withstood more than half a billion years of tectonic wear? And was this truly confined to the Niagara region? Or was it part of a broader restructuring of crustal stresses across the Great Lakes Basin? Not a collapse, not yet, but a settling motion, uneven and accelerating. If one side of the gorge was sinking by even the slightest measure, water pressure could concentrate along weaker points, amplifying erosion. Add the emerging rift line beneath the American side, and the entire hydraulic balance of the falls could shift unexpectedly. They needed more clarity, and to obtain it, they would have to look downward, deeper than any local survey had attempted in decades. Beneath the Horseshoe Falls, an anomaly appeared. A region of lower than expected density, elongated like an underground corridor carved through otherwise solid rock. It was not a cavern. Its edges were too uneven, its shape too irregular. It looked more like rock that had been weakened from within material losing coherence, shifting under pressure, becoming less stable by the month. Beneath the American Falls, the instrument detected the opposite, a zone of unusually high density pushing upward against the overlying shale. That push, even if minuscule, could explain the fracturing above. It was as if the crust was flexing one region bulging upward, another sinking downward creating a stress field that no earlier model had ever accounted for. In simpler terms, the earth beneath Niagara was moving, slowly, quietly, but undeniably. In the days that followed, more anomalies appeared. Tiny new fractures formed along sections of the Canadian walkway. Pressure sensors in the river detected slight but measurable changes in flow velocity. A geological drone sent beneath the mist curtain captured thermal signatures showing subtle heat fluxes along the fracture boundaries, indicating frictional movement at depth. Nothing was dramatic. Nothing was extreme. But everything pointed in the same direction. The system was active. Those overseeing the investigation debated when to notify the public. Some argued for immediate transparency to allow early preparations. Others feared causing unnecessary panic in a region heavily reliant on tourism. For now, the decision leaned toward caution. Continue monitoring, gather data, refine models, and release only the information deemed essential. But one truth hovered over every meeting, unspoken yet undeniable. The falls were changing. Not in centuries, not in decades. Now. The world had grown accustomed to thinking of Niagara as eternal, as immovable as the horizon. But nature does not honour human expectations. Landscapes shift, stone bends, water finds new paths. Even giants of geology can change, sometimes quietly, sometimes without warning, sometimes with consequences that reshape entire regions. And as NASA satellites continued passing overhead, recording every minute shift and every faint vibration from the depths, one question lingered with growing weight. What will Niagara Falls look like tomorrow? If you found this investigation gripping, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and tap that hype icon to help this story reach an even wider audience.